The Enlightenment, also known as the Age of Reason, is the name given to an important period in the history of Western civilization that followed the Renaissance. The Enlightenment occurred roughly from the mid-1600s up through the end of the 1700s and was a time when the human ability to reason was glorified. The word Enlightenment means a time of illumination. The era was given this name because it was a time when an influential group of scholars, writers, artists, and scientists actively sought to use the clear light of reason, that is, rational thought, to rid the world of superstition and ignorance. As a result of their efforts, tremendous improvements in the understanding of mathematics and science occurred, and bold new ideas regarding basic human rights and democracy were developed that served as major inspirations to revolutionaries in both America and France. Near the end of the Renaissance, during the first half of the 17th century, two men, Francis Bacon and René Descartes, each published important books that came to inspire generations of scientists and scholars. In fact, many historians consider these two men to be the fathers of the Enlightenment. Francis Bacon was born in England in 1561, and it was during his days as a student here at Cambridge University's Trinity College that many of his important new ideas began to take shape. Bacon came to believe that science could free ordinary people from ignorance and allow them to lead more productive and comfortable lives. But he knew that in order for this to happen, the minds of human beings first had to be freed from the careless and uncritical ways of thinking that were prevalent at that time. And that was why Francis Bacon promoted a rational approach to science, based on experimentation, and arriving at generalized conclusions based on careful observation. Meanwhile, across the English Channel here in France, the brilliant French mathematician René Descartes published a book that proclaimed that reason and mathematics were all that one really needed to discover truth in the sciences. Descartes likened the universe to a perfect clock that had been designed and built by a master clockmaker, that is, by an all-powerful god, a god who had set the universe into motion and then left it alone. Descartes was a pioneer in mathematically formulating the basic laws that govern the movement of things, from the rolling of ocean waves to the spinning of windmills, and he invented a new type of mathematics called analytic geometry. The ideas promoted by Descartes and Bacon proved to be extremely important because they led to the development of what is called the scientific method a series of simple rational steps that can be followed to help solve even the most complicated scientific problems. As the use of the scientific method developed by Francis Bacon and René Descartes took hold during the Enlightenment, an incredible growth in the understanding of mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology occurred thus greatly accelerating the scientific revolution that began late in the Renaissance. The great English Enlightenment era mathematician and physicist Isaac Newton owes much to the ideas of Descartes and Bacon, but he stands out among others of his time for the sheer brilliance of his work. Newton was born in this house in England in 1642, just six years before Descartes died. The year Newton was born, Jamestown, the original settlement in England's first American colony, Virginia, was just 35 years old. Only 22 years had passed since the Pilgrims founded their colony of Plymouth on the shores of Cape Cod Bay, and just eight years had gone by since the first ships carrying English settlers arrived in the new colony of Maryland. The year of Newton's birth was also the year that the English Civil War began. This was a bloody conflict 
between Parliament and the Royalists that led to the execution of the King and the abolition of the monarchy. And so, for ten years of Newton's youth, England was called a Commonwealth instead of a Kingdom, and was ruled by a Lord Protector instead of a King. The English monarchy was restored in 1660, one year before Isaac Newton entered Cambridge University, to study here at Trinity College, the same college Francis Bacon had attended in the late 1500s. After completing his course of study, a serious outbreak of the deadly bubonic plague forced Newton to escape to the safety of his isolated rural home. And this was where Isaac Newton experienced a burst of scientific insight unmatched in history. During a brief 18-month period, he worked out the basics of a new branch of mathematics called calculus. Newton made crucial discoveries in optics, the science of light. He was able to understand and mathematically formulate the laws of gravity while watching an apple fall from a tree here in his garden. At the same time, he formulated the laws of motion. With these new scientific laws in hand, Newton was able to precisely calculate the weights of the sun and planets and to predict the paths of comets. In the year 1686, Isaac Newton published what many consider to be the greatest scientific book ever written, the Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, the mathematical principles of natural philosophy. His book radically changed people's understanding of the universe and profoundly affected scientific thinking for the next two centuries. Isaac Newton's contributions to mathematics, astronomy, and physics were truly enormous. But the Enlightenment was also a time when others made significant contributions to science as well, including the study of chemistry, electricity, and biology, which grew as a science at an especially rapid rate, due in part to the use of the microscope a scientific tool invented toward the end of the Renaissance. Using the microscope, the Dutch biologist Anton van Leeuwenhoek made detailed observations about a miniature world of living things. And he used mathematics to calculate the sizes of the populations of the organisms he studied. The English biologist Robert Hooke observed box-like compartments in slices of plant tissue and called them cells. Hooke chose this word because what he saw reminded him of the cells in monasteries where the monks live. Today, biologists still use the word cells to describe the basic building blocks of life. During the Age of Reason, another Englishman, William Harvey, became the first person to describe the circulation of blood and to make careful observations on the development of animals before they are born, that is, while they are still embryos. In the mid-1700s, a Swedish botanist named Carlus Linnaeus came up with a logical method for classifying, scientifically grouping and naming the Earth's vast and bewildering variety of living things, thus founding the modern science of taxonomy or biological classification. Under Linnaeus's classification system, creatures are grouped according to their similarities and differences. Classification of an organism always begins with its kingdom. These are its most generalized traits, for example, whether it is in the plant kingdom or in the animal kingdom. And then it is placed in a series of different classification subgroups, such as its family, order, and genus, until finally arriving at the unique characteristics that define it as an individual species. Linnaeus's basic system of biological classification is still in use today. And although it is constantly undergoing changes, it has proven to be a useful tool over the centuries in helping biologists understand the complex relationships that exist among living things.
Back when Carlos Linnaeus and Isaac Newton were making their great discoveries, people like them were known as natural philosophers. Today, they would be called scientists. Philosophers are people who seek wisdom or knowledge. During the Enlightenment, while natural philosophers sought to understand natural things, such as the motion of the planets, or the behavior of microscopic organisms, other philosophers concentrated on the mind, political subjects, and other more abstract concepts as well. One of the most important philosophers to focus on political subjects was an Englishman named John Locke, who lived from 1632 to 1704. Locke believed that the power of a government to rule must come from the consent of the governed. In other words, that people should be able to choose who governs them. Locke took comfort in England's glorious revolution of 1688, in which the king was forced to relinquish a large amount of his power to parliamentary representatives. He promoted the idea that every human being was born with three basic natural rights, those of life, political equality or liberty, and the ownership of property. Locke also promoted freedom of the press, educational reform, and religious tolerance and called for the overthrow of governments that failed to protect basic human rights. In France, several great Enlightenment philosophers wrote passionately about human rights and democracy as well. French philosopher Voltaire, for example, championed the idea of freedom of speech with his famous statement, I disapprove of what you say, but will defend to the death your right to say it while another Frenchman, Montesquieu, called for a complete separation of powers to maintain balance in government, which was to be accomplished by creating separate legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government. Nearly all philosophers of the Enlightenment era wanted to see a strict separation of church and state as well, for they realized that mixing government and religion was almost always a recipe for disaster. The Enlightenment philosophers themselves were usually deists, people without traditional religious beliefs, who believed in what they called nature's God, that is, in an all-powerful spiritual force that had created the universe and everything in it, but then left it alone. The ideas of the Enlightenment philosophers were deeply admired by the leaders of both the American and French revolutions. In fact, Thomas Jefferson fell back on them time and time again when he was composing the Declaration of Independence, as did the framers of the United States Constitution when they worked out a plan of government for the new American democracy. True or false, the age of reason is another name for the Enlightenment. True or false, deists and Catholics had almost identical ideas about religion. True or false, Francis Bacon and René Descartes are considered to be the fathers of the Enlightenment. True or false, Voltaire invented a system for biological classification. True or false, the use of the scientific method improved the quality of scientific study.